tucked away among a small patch of mangroves on the tip of the Suwa Peninsula and close to the Fiji National University Maritime Studies lies Korova informal settlement. Consisting of five family households, the indigenous settlement of Korova is just a few steps away from the bustling and fast-growing capital city of Fiji, which continues expands on its ear. Since Arawal, from Korotolu in Modi Island in the southern Lao group in the early 1990s, they have transformed the swampy coastal piece of land into an informal indigenous settlement and called it home. The journey that took them to this settlement is a story of a family survival, sacrifice, urban migration, climate change mitigation, and the determination for further education and employment opportunities. It is also a tale of reviving the ancient canoe technology known as Drua, the traditional double hull canoe, and a kamakau, single hull canoe. Jijiwa Bera instantly remembered his father, late Jimeone Paki, accompanied by his brother and two grandsons, left Mode Island over 30 years ago and made the 327-kilometer journey to Korowa. We've been here more than 30 years. My father and uh, a son and the two grandsons came in uh, two boats. Eh? One was a Nrua and one is a Thamakau. The coming was uh, only because of education that we live more. But when we were in Suba, this place was uh, vacant. Eh? It was empty until when, uh, my father came with a, with a canoe when we settled. It was in 1991 that Jimmy Onepaki secured the land at Korova from an ancestral landowning group. The family settlement grows and now has about 60 people from extended family members. A youth, Taniela Tokasaya, who is a grandson to late Jimmy Onepaki, was not yet born but also remembers well what appears to be his future and the future of his children. I remember my grandfather very well. This gang here, the only reason they are staying here because of the, for the youth, eh? to get educated. This was the only reason they came here, for my grandfather to ask yes, for the lands here, for us to stay here. The only reason was for us to get educated. If not, we'll just stay there. Or we could have just come and stay somewhere and go back. The family informal settlement is now facing social challenges as population increases and land becoming scarce, coupled by environmental threats posed by climate change. As a result, the community has engaged in a mangrove planting project funded by the United Nations to adapt to the effect caused by climate change. This is a change. It used to be down there. This is where they used to have, a, you know, they used to pile up the rubbish and all. And now it's moving up, right? Yeah, small move. And they came and they gave us uh, 3,500 3, money for us to start up the planting of mangroves. We started last two years. As youth, we are planning to make it like a, a one year program. Like we have to see if, if it does grow well, then we have to, we have to look after it. Or if some dies, and we have to replace it for the mangroves. Eh? That's why it's keeping the having the mangroves is uh, one of the you know the good things that we have, especially us staying in the sea levels here. Yeah. Despite getting into the limelight. The members of the informal settlement are struggling to get electricity by relevant authority for over two decades and has since been relying on solar power to light up their homes. The Korowa people are yet to secure land for relocation but have pre-arranged a piece of land at the northern side of Suwa to make food gardens. We have gardens here but small one. The empty lands that side we always plant our food. They have good plantations this morning. And uh, sometimes we go down to the reef to go fishing, spear fishing yeah? in the daytime. The women of Korova are making tapa clothes, locally known as masi, and traditional mats to source income for family. The creation of tapa goes through different stages before it is ready for market. 
and can be sold to as much as 200 Fijian dollars. With a strong connection to the ocean, the people of Korowa are still preserving the traditional ocean going tanus. This is the same village where the movie makers of Disney film Moana had set foot to learn the tradition and culture of Damako building, as told by Gigi Wabera. We tell the world, as, that's why the Disneyland they came here. Mm. They make the movie Moana, they came to us, mm. and they like the idea of uh, us. Mm. We help them make the movie possible. Mm. We told uh, these uh, Disney people mm. that uh, our life mm. is the ocean that makes it uh, Possible, eh? It's the ocean that gives the oxygen. If you forget the ocean, then uh, you won't live long. We believe that, that because, because we are so connected to the ocean, never ever one time the hurricane touch us or tsunami. No. no. It's a uh, Two way thing, eh? mm. you give and the ocean will give you this. Because we, we love the ocean. That's why we don't have an outboard here. Yeah? Yeah. Our family will never use outboard. Never. We're still using the Macau. Although there is one of our family members there who used one this year. But not, not ours, no, no. because of our connection to the ocean, mm. we will never use outboard engine, <laughs> never. If you use outboard engine, you are not friendly to the ocean. Mm. Yeah.